the GPT store just launched. And if you are like one of probably millions looking to get your custom GPT up on the GPT store, we are going to show you how exactly to start from step one, which is building your own custom GPT. One way of looking of what exactly is this GPT store is looking at it like an example of the Apple App Store. Similar to that, it will house a bunch of different GPTs, custom GPTs that are built by both businesses and AI creators. All right, it's time to create our own custom GPT. I'm going to pass it over to software developer JB at Netlify, who's going to walk you through just that. And the end result of what he builds is pretty cool. So this is ChatGPT, right? Now you can uh, explore GPTs, and this is like their GPT store. It's kind of like, I was reading about it, and it's kind of like the app store in a way, right? Like that's how you can think of exactly. it? Exactly, exactly. But you can make apps or GPTs without code even. Um, you just like describe what you want to make and it kind of kind of does it. So ours is called Website Deployer. Um, mm -hmm. And you can uh, find it by searching for Netlify or Website Deployer. Mm -hmm. um, and this opens a new tab. And um, yeah, we have some examples here. So. Make a website that um, generates dad jokes. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, let's give it a shot. <laughs> so yeah, the way this works is it leverages GPT-4's amazing uh, LLM capabilities um, and integrates directly with our API. So I'm sure you've seen ChatGPT generate code, Yes. Uh, but all it really does is then display the code for you to copy paste on your own, right? So this will do that. It's kind of, you know, generating the the pay the the project um, for you now and it'll show you the code but what's unique about ours is that after it shows you the code uh, it'll let you deploy directly to Netlify from within chat GPT so um, this is really powerful because uh, you can you know deploy simple sites without leaving your your chat GPT uh, context. Yeah, exactly. So he, here it's giving you a little preview of the code. And uh, yeah, I think this looks looks good to me. So uh, I'm just going to say, yeah, go ahead and deploy. All right. Does it matter what you say? Like, I, I think in one other video I saw you typed in, let's go to market or LGTM. Oh, <laughs> looks good to me. Looks good yeah. to me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Does it matter yeah. how you prompt it to deploy? No, it'll figure it out. So that's just wow. that's just what GPT four uh, can do. It'll sense. Okay, this is an, this is affirmative. This is you know this is say um, no. I want to iterate on this. Then it won't deploy, and it'll it'll listen to you. It can figure that out really uh, intelligently. Um, incredible. So so this this is the part. This is like the the custom GPT uh, action right here. So it's saying, okay, is it okay to talk to app.netlify.com? Um, I'm going to say always allow. And now it's formulating the payload and sending it, uh, making a, a fetch, a, a request to our API. And here we go. Um, so here's the link. And then also here's how to claim it. So um, as an anti-spam measure, we only allow these, uh, these public URLs to live for one hour, right? Because uh, you're not signed in here. We don't know who you are as a user. Um, so we, we get a lot of spam like that to counteract that. Um, the site lives by default for one hour or you can claim it. So um, be sure to hit the claim URL. Uh, that's gonna take you to Netlify. Uh, if you're already signed in, you can claim it or you can claim it uh, while you're creating a new account. Um, so first let's let's check it out actually. So yeah, very simple interface, of course. Uh, you could be more descriptive in your prompt. So if you wanna say, I want it to look like this, I wanna use this color palette, absolutely it'll uh, adhere to your requirements. Um, a baboom, ha <laughs> 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 ha. I like this. <laughs> um, well, so yeah, right, this is, Again, not really any, anything enterprise worthy, right? I wouldn't go directly to production with yeah. this, this content, but it's kind of cool to see, hey, you know, like, like you said, you know, you, you were in your, uh, while you, you were learning coding and learning all the ins and outs and how to glue everything together, 
Um, this kind of shows you how to do it and then actually does it too. And that's the powerful part. It's not just showing you the ropes of, okay, now copy paste this uh, yeah. and then figure you figuring out deployment on your own. Uh, this will deploy it for you. And, you know, I can just send you this link right now and you can visit it. Right. And, yeah. uh, and, um, that's and this is live on the internet for for anyone to see. So wow. then, um, so then the claim, this claim part, all you have to do is click this button uh, and it'll load. And because I'm already signed into Netlify now, this is associated with my account. So it's now officially my site and it'll live forever. Um, incredible. Yeah. I, keep, uh, I feel like that's all I keep on saying. I'm just in awe. I know, it, you know, I know <laughs> ChatGPT has been around for a year and, and a few months, you know, since November of what was it? 20 last year just one year yeah yeah but i still i still catch myself you know going wow a lot yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> what are what are some limitations like especially with yeah. the code is it what are some limitations with this that's a great question so right now we are constrained by gpt4's completion token output so it can only generate uh about four kilobytes of code um, I'm hoping that they'll lift that limitation and figure out a, uh, a way to improve that. Um, but basically, um, yeah, we can create very small sites. Um, you can also create multiple pages. So if you want to have like a portfolio site with an about page and, and things like that, um, we can, it can create multi-page websites, but it still needs to, to stay within, uh, uh, within the four kilobyte limit essentially. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And when you, we don't need to go through it today, um, but maybe even just walk me through verbally the process to creating your custom GPT, like the UI for it. When I was on a uh, chat GPT for creating your, oh yeah, create, it's pretty mm -hmm. straightforward for the most part. Hey, or was there anything that you ran into any challenges you ran into for this part? Yeah. So this, this is, um, you can go, you can either keep this simple or go a little more complex. So mm -hmm. a simple route is actually, you can have a conversation with chat GP, GPT and it'll, it'll like generate a GPT for you. So they've actually made a custom GPT that they call GPT builder. And this will configure your custom GPT uh, on your behalf. And what this is doing behind the scenes is essentially just filling out these fields for you. So mm -hmm. you can call it, you know, give it a name, a uh, cool, uh, GPT, right. And you kind of get a preview here on the right. Um, maybe we can, uh, create, um, let's see, uh, create haikus on the spot. We'll call it a haiku GPT. How about that? Mm -hmm. Uh, you are haiku GPT and you come up with uh, haikus about a given topic, <laughs> something like nice. that, right? Yeah. Um, and these conversation starters, this is like, this is how you build in examples oh, okay. um, yes. right at the bottom. Um, now the powerful parts come in when you fill out any of this section. So here is what's called knowledge. And behind the scenes, what this is doing is um, basically creating embeddings for you. And embeddings are um, a way to convert files into uh, a vector database that is easily searchable. And they kind of do this all for you. Uh, it's also known as a retrieval augmented generation or RAG. And there are startups that exist solely focusing on RAG and how to optimize that. And OpenAI has kind of created this as a uh, very easy beginner friendly way of you don't really it abstracts all of that away um and yeah so you can upload up, i think it's up to 20 files here in knowledge they can be up to a half uh gigabyte i believe in size um and so pdfs markdown files anything like that it can be really useful for uh you upload a lot you have like a lot of data that you want it to search. Oh, right. So, wow. so if, if the if the user says, "Hey, um, who, who, you know, who was the Olympic medal winner in 
1976 Olympics, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it knows that. Maybe it, ChatGPT has um, just innate knowledge of that from its its uh, training. But if not, you can supply it um, with either, you know, with this data. So that that's really useful for too for um, uh, for data that isn't readily available on the public internet that mm -hmm. ChatGPT might not have that innate knowledge on. You can kind of instruct your GPT to learn that through this mechanism here. Wow, that's so powerful. Um, so, um, so, and then actions are how you tell it to interact with an API. So this is what we used uh, to have it interact with our Netlify API. And what it takes is open API schema. So um, if you have, if you like auto generate your docs, you might already have open API schema uh, and you can just paste it in here. And it, that's how it knows how to interface with, with your API. Wow. Um, I want to show you too another uh, GPT that I made and can kind of Thank walk you through. Um, uh, so, so this is an emoji recommender and it kind of, uh, it, it will suggest new emoji that hasn't been created yet. And what I did was, um, I gave it knowledge of all the existing emoji, all the emoji proposals that have already been, um, uh, like rejected, like people have come to the, there's uh, something called the Unicode consortium. And they're like a, a, a group that defines emoji and puts it into Unicode. Uh, and there's this whole proposal process of, um, of creating emoji and getting them like signed and agreed upon. Uh, but some emojis get recommended and they get rejected, right? So this, uh, what I did here, so if I you go into edit GPT, you can see the name and some instructions. Um, so I just gave it like a basic description here and I uploaded knowledge. So I said emoji proposals should conform to the guidelines and I uploaded like this HTML file. Uh. That, and these guidelines were readily available on the internet. I just uh, included them as knowledge so that the GPT can search it more easily. Uh, it should not already exist and it should not already be proposed, right? And the, these uh, these files are just like text files and HTML files that I just uploaded, right? And then yeah. now it knows how to search and it, it will supplant um, the instructions with with this knowledge. So so when I come back here and I would say, yeah, would, um, would a cozy face, <laughs> I love wouldn't it. that be a good idea for a new emoji? and it's searching that and is so see, cool you can see here this it gives you some feedback of like what it's doing so it's taking my prompt and searching through that vector database that it created on its own on its behalf for me i'm um, looking at the embeddings and saying okay well is there already a cozy face or has it already been suggested and maybe rejected and here we go and it says uh it's not specifically mentioned um okay but it's going through uh some of the guidelines and it's it's telling me like wh what are the guidelines for mm -hmm. uh for a cozy face <laughs> for a cozy face yeah exactly is there uh, one that you you've done before with this emoji proposal that would it is the output when the it meets all the requirements will it actually no sorry i was you know i was gonna ask you was would it actually output the new emoji? But I'm guessing it wouldn't because it, it's no. yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it would know it would know the requirements and yeah. say, hey, this is a good idea. I like it. Or um, no, this hasn't been. This has already been rejected. So don't yeah, don't try to. Uh, this wouldn't be a good one to submit or things like that. Um, but I had there, there's some fun ones of like, what are some animal emoji that don't exist yet? Right. Oh, and goodness. and it kind of like, yeah, the searches through knowledge. And um, I found it came up with good uh, things for like um, red panda. And it combines like the red square emoji with the panda emoji. Right. And you kind of put those two together. And that means like red panda. Right. So yeah. um, just that. like a fun. A, it's a fun way to um, uh, kind of it lowers the entry to barrier 
for a lot of yes. people to create um, like an app essentially, or like a custom AI, right? Because I didn't write any code to do this, right? This was just all an instruction and it was like instruction plus data, right? And and those two things combined, you can get some really cool and, and powerful results. Um, and and uh, they're opening up like a profit sharing mechanism where depending on how useful your GPT is, you can get like a revenue cut. Um, but they haven't really gone into much detail about that yet. So I'm eager to see what that turns out to be like. Yeah, I remember reading about that or hearing about that um, in the news, but it'll be curious to see how this evolves. I mean, even from day one, where it's at right now and considering that, you know, you, I, I'm sure you've heard that saying where, uh, you know, this is a broad statement, but generative AI is the worst today that it will ever be, meaning it's just continuing to get better. <laughs> Only getting better. better. Yeah. The fact that this is what we're getting today is is pretty incredible. Yeah, I know. What a time to be alive. <laughs> I know. Well, to start with, though, we'll go back to you got to start with the website deployer. And for anyone who's watching, uh, leave in the comments what you build with our website deployer. Thank you so much, JB. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Talk later.